it's very important to understand what we're looking for in a paddock before we graze it, then what type of impact we're looking for during a present grazing, and then what type of aftermath we want to leave in a previously grazed paddock. So the number one thing is we want enough forage dry matter in a paddock before we graze it so that it's even worth grazing, to be quite honest with you. You know, if, if this paddock had an average height of only about six inches, then, or even eight inches, frankly, in July, in this heat, in Missouri, I would heavily advise against grazing that because you already have very marginal ground cover to protect soil moisture and soil temperature and my microbes in the soil and, and the plant roots. And if we were to graze that, we would all, even if we said we were just gonna take 50%, then that would mean we were taking it down to four inches. And that's way too short in this, in this heat and at this time of year. And it's very likely, it's already been droughty and it's likely to be more droughty as we go through the rest of this summer. So what we're looking for to be able to carry us adequately through, through these hot summers and deep into the fall and even into the winter is we wanna make sure that we've got enough forage biomass before we even consider grazing something. And, and that's what we're looking at here. So when we look at this paddock that's gonna be the very next, next paddock to be grazed today, what we see, first of all, we see quite a bit of diversity and complexity in plant species in here. Again, I see multiple stories. That's what I'm looking for. I want grasses that are tall grasses, intermediate, and then low growing stories. And again, I want that to be comprised of the three primary plant classes, grasses, legumes, and forbs. When we've got all three of those, then we're gonna have much more optimal functioning of the plants themselves, of our livestock, of our wildlife, by the way, and birds and so forth, and the mi microbes and microorganisms on and in our soil. So all of this, we have trained ourselves to think that our pastures should be these nice, tightly manicured monocultures. But this is what a highly productive pasture really looks like with the diversity, the multiple stories. It's gonna have at times, some people say it's a ragged appearance. I say it's a beautiful appearance. And this is, you know, it's not the same. That to me is what's so beautiful about this. You get contrast out here that are gorgeous. The other thing that we notice as we walk out through these fields like this, first of all, we can see lots of butterflies flying above the mix here. They're everywhere we hear a lot of birds in the background. That's also what we wanna see. There's pollinators. We see flowering plants in here pretty much at every time of the active growing season. So we're attracting pollinators for a large part of the year. And as we physically move through this sward, you see insects that are rising before me. And that's exactly what I wanna see. The more insects that we see in here, then the more biologically active this pasture is. And, and if we're getting a lot of insects, then we should be seeing a lot of predators such as spiders. So in the early morning dew, and we see a lot of pollinators here, a lot of bees flying around here. You know, we wanna see a lot of spiders in the mix as well. Spiders are indicative that we have a high level of insect activity returning and they've got their prey here waiting for them. So, so spiders are a very good indicator species that we're starting to get a lot of biological activity returned to our pastures. So again, this would be a very, very good example of an ungrazed sward, a sward that is now ready for grazing because we have density to this sward, we have height to this sward, we have multiple stories, we have grasses, legumes, and forbs present, and we have plant species in here that are at the mid-stage or slightly beyond maturity. Now that's critical as well, because what we have found is that our livestock perform best when they're eating forages that are right around mid-stage maturity rather than highly vegetative. Highly vegetative forages 
have far too much protein relative to carbohydrates or energy in the diet. And your livestock are going to have digestive issues with that, as evidenced by the fact that the manure is very loose and runny. They actually have an off-putting aroma to them because they're producing excess uric acid, trying to excrete that excess nitrogen and ammonia due to the excess protein. So many people will say this is too mature for grazing and for optimal cattle performance. Now we just looked at the cattle and we saw that they're in outstanding body condition and yet this is what they're eating every day. This is also, we do a lot of grass finishing and produce USDA choice and prime grass fed beef. This is the type of sward that you, and, the, and the maturity that you want to be moving across if you want to put high levels of gain on these cattle and balance that protein and energy consumption on a daily basis.